Okay, welcome back. Right now we're going to take a look at a relative velocity problem that is a little bit more difficult than the last one we went over. And this is going to be dealing with um, a relative velocity of ships traveling in the ocean. And we're going to be asked to find a relative velocity of an object with respect to the water. So the problem says a Coast Guard ship is traveling at a constant velocity of 4.2 meters per second due east relative to the water. On his radar screen, the navigator detects an object that is moving at a constant velocity. The object is located at a distance of 2310 meters with respect to the ship, in a direction of 32 degrees south of east. Six, minute later, six minutes later, he notes that the position relative to the ship has changed to 1120 meters, 57 degrees south of west. What are the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the object relative to the water express the direction as an angle with respect to due west. So the first thing I would like to point out here is that you cannot get away with just doing a rule of thumb for relative velocity here. You actually have to apply the definition and you have to add the vectors. You can't just subtract one from the other. It's not going to work here. Okay. So let's just take a look at what we have. Okay. So we have a boat that's moving, this Coast Guard ship. It's moving at a constant velocity of 4.2 meters per second due east. So I'm going to draw that here. 4.2 seconds meters per second due east relative to the water. And so this boat is just moving due east. And I have my little compass over here. I'm going to go ahead and label it just so we can clarify what's going on. I have north, south, east, west. We're going to put that in unit vector notation in a little bit. Um, so let's just, that's what we're starting with. And we're also given now, we're given the position, the position of another object located somewhere down here, okay, which I'll have down here, at different times. I have a position at one time here relative to the boat, and then I have a position again relative to the boat. Okay, but before we even get there, I just, I labeled our boat here. Let's just start there. What are, what are we looking for? Um, we're looking for the direction and velocity of the object relative to the water okay so how are we gonna go about finding that well the velocity of the object relative to the water is going to equal the velocity of the object relative to the boat plus the velocity of the boat with respect to the water and this is vectoral notation here. We talked about this before. This is our definition of relative velocity. Okay, notice that these vectors line up here. We have the boats on the inside, so they're going to cancel out when we add them up. That's how we get our relative velocity. Okay, so that's the form it needs to be in. That's what we're looking for. Okay, we're looking for the relative velocity, the object with respect to the water. Now, we already have the velocity of the boat with respect to the water, so that's not a problem. What we're going to be looking for in this case is we're looking for the velocity of the object with respect to the boat. So this is what we're looking for first. We don't have that. And we're given some information down here about this object that's moving to the boat. So I have this, this object down here. This is the object down here. And the problem gives us two different positions, two different positions at different points of time. The first one is, it tells us the, the, the position is located at 2310 with respect to ship 32 degrees south of east. Okay, so here is our, this is our Coast Guard ship. This is our boat. And I'll go ahead and I'll just label this here. This is the boat right here. This is my object, okay? And it's going to be moving across. We're going to get two different positions. And around all of these objects is the water, okay, W. Okay, so they gave us two different positions. And why is that important? Well, first of all, the first position we'll put here, I'll just put it towards the center like this. And then six minutes later, the object has moved to a position over here relative to the boat. Okay, so why is that even important? We're talking about relative velocity here. Why do we even care about the positions? I'm trying to find the velocity of the object to the boat, right? Because we were already given this one, the velocity of the, this boat to the water. And I'm given these position vectors. What does that even have to do with the velocity of the object to the boat? Well, if we go back to our definition of constant velocity, what we note is this. 
the definition of constant velocity. Okay, so if we have the velocity of the object with respect to the boat, and it's moving at a constant speed, just like in the x direction, if we just say delta x over delta t, this time we're going to say delta r over of the object to the boat over t. Okay, and so that delta r represents the vector from here to here. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw this across here. And what that's going to represent is simply the displacement of the object to the boat. That's right there, OK? That's the displacement of the object to the boat, OK? That's final position minus initial. And this is why the position is relevant here. Now, how do we go about doing this now? Uh, since we have all of these uh, components, well, what we have to do is we have to first write this out in unit vector notation. So I'm going to go ahead and write these different vectors out. We're going to end up getting the position of the object relative to the boat final minus the position of the object relative to the boat initial. And that's just the definition of the, of delta r or displacement. So how do we go about doing this? Well, like we said before, we have to write these in component form or unit vector notation form. And so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to just do that real quick. Okay, so if we're looking at unit vector notation here, the x component is simply 2310 cosine 32 uh, degrees here, and that's positive because we're going to positive x, and the y component is a negative 2310 sine 32. Okay, so we have the x component here, the y component here. That's just unit vector notation. Over here on the final, we see the uh, the component over here. They're both negative. Negative 1120 cosine 57, negative 1120 sine 57. So this is just unit vector notation, and this is what we're positioned. So that was really, uh, in essence, the hardest part. Now all I have to do is just subtract these two components. So I need to take this final x minus this initial x, and then this final y minus this initial y, which I'm going to do right now. So what I've done down here is I'm just moving down. I move our, my vectors down here. So I have the uh, final position of the object relative to the boat minus the initial position of the object to the boat. All I'm going to do is subtract these components. And now I'm going to get the displacement between them. So once I do that, I'm going to get down here negative 2, 5, 7, 0, comma, 2, 8, 1. OK, so now I have my position function. And we can move through this a lot easier now to find that relative velocity. It's going to be, from here forward, it's not going to be uh, that difficult at all. That was really the most difficult part, figuring out what to do with the positions, getting the uh, the vector and unit vector notation, and then uh, getting your displacement from those. So let's go ahead and rewrite our formula now. So the velocity of the object to the boat equals the displacement of the object to the boat over time. And if you remember back to the question, what, how much was our time? Our time was uh, the boat traveled at just a few minutes. It traveled for uh, six minutes. Okay, so we want to be dealing with uh, seconds here, right? Because we're dealing with meters per second. So that's not a problem. So we take our vector here. We're going to write it like this. We're going to say negative two five seven zero comma two eight one, and then all of that divided by the scalar of time. In this case, is six minutes times sixty, which is three hundred and sixty seconds. We're getting real close here to getting our um, velocity of the object relative to the boat. So now all we do here is we're going to divide each component by 360. Okay, so once we divide our components um, by 360, we're going to get our final uh, velocity vector of the object relative to the boat. It's negative 7.15 comma 0 0.782. And the whole point of finding the velocity of the object to the boat was simply because we wanted to find, in the very beginning, the velocity of the object relative to the water. That was the whole point of the question. And we went through all of this trouble 
just to find this. And we already have this. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to clone this equation. We're going to move it down to where we were working just to kind of get an overview of what we were even trying to do here. Um, just keep going down here. Okay, so all right, so this is what we care about. We care about adding these two vectors up. And so now we've found this vector right here. We know exactly what it is in unit vector notation. And we already knew the velocity of the boat with respect to the water. So all I need to do at this point is just to apply this definition to find the velocity of the object with respect to the water. So we just line them up, the velocity of the object with respect to the boat, which is what we spent all that t time just finding, uh, is here. And the velocity of the boat with respect to the water is here. And all I do now is I add up my x components and I add my y components and we are almost there. So when I add up the x components, what I'm going to get is negative 2.95. And when I add up my y components, I'm going to get just simply 0 0.782. Now, if you remember what the question asked for, it asked for the velocity of the object with respect to the water, but it also asked for a magnitude and a direction, and it wanted us to give a reference point to the west axis. So all we need to do now is the final part of the question, and we are almost done. Okay, so the first thing that we do when we have our components, we draw a coordinate system. In this case, I'll go ahead and label it. I'll label it like a compass. I'll say north, south, east, and west here. But we always redraw an origin, and the reason I drew this a little bit off this way is because that's the direction we're going. And so we always start at the origin, and you do the x component first, always, okay? Don't let your pencil leave the paper. Draw out that component right here. Okay, I'm letting this one leave the paper, but when you're drawing it, don't let it leave the paper. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. Here is my y component, okay? There it is. Now, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to write now this vector with the black arrow, just so you can see the difference. There is the final magnitude of the velocity of the object with respect to the water. Okay, there's my magnitude. Okay. And there's my angle with respect to the west axis. So I've now located where this vector is, and I know exactly where I am oriented. We're going to be north of west, okay, once we find this out. And to find out the magnitude, we simply are going to apply Pythagorean theorem to these components, and I'm going to use inverse tangent for these components. So let's finish this problem off. So I simply apply Pythagorean theorem to my components. I have my negative 2.95 here, and I had my 0.782 here. And once I take the magnitude of those, um, I get a 3.05 meters per second. Now we just need to find out this angle. And so to do that, we're just going to take the inverse tangent of the y component over the x component. And so once I apply the inverse tangent of the y over the x, okay, I'm going to get 14.8 degrees with this reference angle. But if we really want to put it together, remember what we have to have always. Okay, We have to have a magnitude angle and a reference. So I'm going to write it out here, the velocity of the object with respect to the water, and I'm going to put my little arrow above it to show that it's a vector, equals 3.05 meters per second, 14.8 degrees, Okay, north of west. Okay, and that's what the problem asked for. And so I put a little box around our final answer so we can see it's very clear, it sticks out. That's our answer, that's what we're trying to express here. And just don't forget, we always want to have magnitude, angle, and reference. And now you have solved the problem of finding the relative velocity of the object to the water.